Hello, my name is Laura Mosqueda, and I'm delighted that we can show you what the next phase of your training could look like. Tech School of Medicine, we pride ourselves on challenging paradigms and thinking outside of the box. The amount of exposure that we get as students at LA County and Tech and all these different sites is incredible. The training you get here is as hands-on as it could be. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Oh, do you have the CT scan? Yeah. Let's pull up that CT scan. So this is the CT scan from the first day. We take on the toughest challenges, the toughest cases. We take on the biggest questions for research to try and make a difference and improve human health. We are smack in the middle of it all, right here uh, in this health sciences campus. So we have a county hospital right across the street that has incredible, not only inpatient, but ambulatory facilities. Right across the street in the other direction, we have our Keck Hospital with wonderful ambulatory and outpatient surgery sorts of facilities. Then on my right, we have our Norris Comprehensive Cancer Hospital. And then just across the street, we have our major research buildings too. This one is unique because it's a radio bus. Research and education are really the foundations upon which everything else at the School of Medicine is, is founded on. You have multitudes of opportunities to do bench work, uh, clinical research, translational research, and really take your work from the bench side to the bedside. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. This week, in fact, we've had a sickle cell patient, an aplastic anemia patient who came for treatment. We get uh, TTP patients. We have three to five autologous stem cell transplant patients on at any given time. I've been here 44 years, and there's two common foundational principles. Number one, patient interests supersede self-interest. This is absolutely critical. Your levels are coming down, looking good. Um, so you're thinking discharge? Yeah, I think you can go home today. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second is that this is a teaching center, and we talk about the very famous professors that are here to teach you. But the one thing everybody learns is that the master teachers are the patients themselves. And so, sir, we're going to show you what you actually had before and after. Okay. okay. This is what you came in with. <laughs> That's what you came in with. <laughs> Nearly locked out that entire lung, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You must have a passion. Part of your mission is to take care of the underserved. We are serving the underserved. We are serving those that are more socioeconomically advantaged. But essentially, you want to serve everyone and everybody and serve them the same, regardless of who they are. So who's our next patient? In here? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. These are the patients that, you know, it's not just a pleasure to serve, it's an honor to serve. They're my people. It's, I see myself reflected in the, in the population. I really wanted to come back home in more ways than one. This could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my uncle. Um, and no other place could afford me that opportunity besides here. It's been a, the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life, being here. Uh, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think were possible. We're looking for that spark, that spark in a person that's going to become a good physician who's going to put the patient first. Can we get Dr. Dixon here, please? Can we get some backup? No matter how dramatic this scenario is, it's something that happens. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. We are pretty much in the ORs from day one. We do cases that other places um, just read about in textbooks. You really want to care for the caregiver. Um, our goal is to prevent burnout before it even happens. It takes about eight months till you start thinking, I can do this, I can master this. Do you see anything worrisome about all no, I don't. This is not a movie. This is for real. Can you show us two fingers? It's really important that not only do they listen to what the attending has to say, 
but equally important, the attending needs to listen to what the resident has to say. Show me where your pain is. We're here to learn. There's no dumb questions ever. We really want an inclusive environment where you can be the thought and the change leader on our campus. If you come to USC, you will be part of a close-knit, collaborative Trojan community. It's so important to know that you're part of the Trojan family. That's not just a catchphrase here, it's something that we really need. We care about the people who are here. We care about you after you leave. It's a lifelong commitment on our part. I'm Yoni Nativ. I'm a third year cardiology fellow at USC. Training here at USC, uh, I'd say, is outstanding. Um, we work primarily at LA County Hospital, which is an amazing teaching uh, institution. And we also kind of balance that with some opportunities at Keck, which is our private hospital affiliated with USC, which together I think creates a really nice balance in the training experience. At County, we see a very underserved population, patients with very advanced pathologies, uh, very rare diseases, or sometimes common diseases, but very advanced stages. Um, and uh, at Keck, on sort of on the other side of the street, we see very complex diseases. It's a tertiary referral center hospital, um, so patients are coming there for, you know, sometimes second, third, fourth opinion, um, and are getting um, really complicated procedures done, uh, evaluation for heart transplant, being transplanted, valve surgeries, valve procedures, complex interventions for coronary artery disease. So um, it's a really nice balance between the two hospitals, and it really creates for like a nice uh, comprehensive training experience. Hello, my name is Helga Van Hurley. I'm the program director of the Cardiology Fellowship Training Program. Our program, I think, is unique in that we have a wide um, breadth of opportunities and diversity in patient populations um, and it sort of we fulfill the mission not only of our educational program but of our mission as a uh, healthcare institution providing care to the most vulnerable populations. At County um, I think that the experience is diverse in a number of different ways one in terms of the the diverse patient population that we see uh, at County. You know, as a catch-all hospital for Los Angeles, we see people from all different backgrounds, ethnicities, diseases that come from unique geographic regions. The training experience um, is uh, a little bit more autonomy, a little bit more hands-on um, uh, decisions and leadership from, from the trainees, the fellows. Equipment at Keck is sort of the state of the art in cardiology right now, so they get exposure to cutting edge technology and devices as well as therapies. So we have heart transplant at Keck. We have patients getting ventricular assist devices um, and mechanical circulatory support and sort of um, the more complicated structural interventions at Keck. Each year of your training, there's different set of rotations that we, that we work through um, that is sort of geared towards that year of training. So. Early on, we try to do more in-service duties on this cardiac intensive care unit, heart failure, consult services. And then as you kind of graduate through the program, you get a little bit more elective time, more time to kind of explore your interests um, and develop those interests sort of in preparation for either your uh, next step going into practice or uh, an advanced uh, fellowship training experience. Uh, for example, uh, many fellows who want to do interventional cardiology will spend more time their third year during their elective months in the cath lab, getting some hands-on experience, sort of preparing themselves for that next step. And I think that also as you go through the training experience uh, across three years, you get sort of graduated autonomy as um, your knowledge base improves, your, your level of confidence improves, and your mentors uh, and like attendings' confidence in you increases over time. You kind of get that more, more autonomy and more uh, um, um, say in the decision-making process. We have services that are primary services, meaning they are our own cardiology patients um, that we are taking full responsibility for and assuming their care. And then we also have services where we are a consultant service to uh, every other service in the hospital that needs us, surgical services, med medical services, um, and oftentimes they have like a specific question in mind or uh, need some guidance regarding specific uh, disease or medication management and they'll come to us um, to help uh, with that decision or with those recommendations. And I think that we are in an awesome part of LA. 
way. I've lived both on the west side and the east side, and I, you know, I think that uh, the location of USC is really nice. You know, as a trainee or someone working in LA, you, people kind of tend to live around that area, and it's very central in LA, so it's very accessible to any part of Los Angeles. So you kind of enjoy all the best parts of LA, whether you want to go to the beach or you want to go hiking in the mountains, or if you want to go, you know, out of town to like a, a day trip or something like that. It's it's a really nice location. Um, and then uh, uh, amongst, uh, amongst us in our, in our program, uh, we get along really well. We hang out outside of work. Uh, you know, Pre-COVID, we go get drinks, a happy hour. We'd get together for barbecues, uh, hikes on the weekend. So you know, it's a really collegial, supportive environment, um, not just amongst ourselves, uh, amongst the fellows, but also between us and the faculty. I think that's one of the great things about our program is that our relationships with our faculty, we're very close with them. We're getting lunch with them, we're getting coffee and tea between cases, just kind of chatting about life, chatting about interesting cases we've come across, picking each other's brains. Um, so it's really a very tight-knit uh, family. I think that the career opportunities are, are endless. I, you know, we've had people that, many people go into general practice, I'd say that that's probably the more common thing uh, across the board, you know, in programs across the country. The sky's the, li the limit, really. They, they can go into subspecialty fellowships, so they can go into interventional cardiology, electrophysiology, heart failure. Um, they can go into practice in the community or academic-based practice. Um, so we've had fellows that go all over the country and set a practice or go to other institutions. They have great um, experiences here and they get the volumes that they need to do a lot of the procedures that they're expected to do in practice. It's just an outstanding learning experience here uh, with pathology that you're not going to come across in other places in the country. Um, and I knew that if I was only going to have a few years of dedicated training um, in internal medicine, which is where I started here, and then in cardiology, um, then I want, really wanted it to be the, you know, the most challenging, rigorous, um, and rewarding experience that uh, it, it could be. Um, and I knew that USC was uh, that best opportunity for me. Once you've done a residency or a fellowship here, you are ready for the next phase of your career. And that might be going into clinical practice, it might be going into academia, it might be going on for more training. Whatever it is, be assured that you are going to be the most well-prepared person possible for that next part of your career.